in. Is this where the damn drumming and the music kicks in? Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to On The Pipe Podcast. I'm your host as always, Tyler Shepardson, and today is Monday, August the 29th, 2022, years after zero, and I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate you tuning in to this week's episode of On The Pipe Podcast. This is going to be a little bit of a, of a different week, a little bit of a, a change up in the game plan. As everyone knows, today kicked off the 2022 International Six Days Enduro that is going on in France. So every year we try to do something cool. We try to cover it the best we can because, let's be honest, it's it's pretty hard to keep up with the ISDE, especially if you don't know a lot about it. Uh, and actually, I'm kind of in that group of not knowing much about it. But we got boots on the ground. We got people over there watching and listening and reporting back to us so With that being said, typically in the years past, I try to do something different for ISDE. So we've had some times where we've had interviews from people over there. Um, I know a lot of times cell service isn't the best, and so that is kind of hard to make happen. But last year, I ended up writing an article every single day on the website. So I did a, um, I would I would go on there and write a recap of each day and post that on our website. But um, this year. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a show every single day this week and let you guys know what is going on, the storylines that we're hearing, and I hope that they will get better throughout the week. So I hope your expectations aren't very high right now, but I hope that they will be <laughs> by the by the end of the week. So ISDE, it's hard to follow along with. They said that there is a live broadcast this year, but you have to put in your credit card information to use it. And they say it's free, but they also ask for your credit card information. So that was a bit confusing. I did not put in my credit card information. If anybody else did put in their credit card information, feel free to shoot me a DM. Let me know how the coverage is and uh, if it's worth it and if you can actually see what's going on over there. That being said, you can find results at fim-isde.com. That will get you set up for results. You can kind of sort it a few different ways. It's always a little bit hard to keep up with. But we got our world trophy team, we got our junior trophy team, we got our women's trophy team, and then we got all of our individual classes. So you can you can search by classes, you can search by people, you can search the individual overalls, you can search the team scores, and uh, and all that stuff. So get on there, play around with it, mess around with it a little bit, or just wake up with OTP each day, throw us on while you're at work, and uh, we'll try to get you through this ISDE week, because this is a week that... Everyone looks forward to it. is a big event in the world. It's a big event for America. We've had a lot of success at the ISDE over the past several years. And we're looking like we're going to have some more success this year. But before we get into all that, just want to remind you guys, as always, Beta Motorcycles is the official manufacturer of this very podcast, On the Pipe Podcast. Beta Motorcycles has been family owned and operated since 19. 19- Oh, five. That's a long time ago. They manufacture the finest enduro trials and dual sport motorcycles that are known for their premium quality and rideability. Beta motorcycles are the best looking bikes on the market and they back it up with their superior performance. Head over to betausa.com for more information on their available models or to find a dealer near you to get yours today. So, we need a we need a beta dealer of choice. I get a lot of people that are asking questions about beta, a lot of people that want to see betas, a lot of people that want to buy some betas. So I need to find a, a beta partnership with a dealership so we can send people to you and get some of these betas rolling off the showroom floors and into a trail near you. So let me know if you got anybody in mind. Um, this episode is also brought to you in part by Zach Tussle at Raymond James Financial. Zach is a racer and... Zach is a financial advisor that helps his clients win when it comes to retirement and financial planning. If you or someone you know wants to save and invest for their future or 
is already retired and needs advice for income during retirement, Zach Tussle is always my first recommendation. Find out more by Googling Zach Tussle or on their website at financialadvisorsdenvernc.com. Uh, you can also look up Zach on the socials. He has been on the show. He was uh, a guest on OTP Tuesday a couple months ago. So if you didn't hear that, I suggest you go back and, and listen to that. He talked a little bit about what he did, but more importantly, he talked about his background and how much he races and that he is one of us. And I think that's one of the, the cool things about um, using him for your financial planning and your financial future is that he gets it. He he gets us. He's out racing on the weekends with everyone too. So um, find Zach Tussle on the socials or at financialadvisorsdenvernc.com. With that being said, let's head into uh, a little bit of the day. We're going to we're gonna go through it the best that we can. Like I said, don't have high expectations for this one. Hopefully, it will get better as the rest of the week progresses. But the way that it sits right now, after one day of racing, we're just going to go through all the, the different results real quick, and then we'll fill in some, some missing pieces along the way. But leading the way... In the trophy, the world trophy, the premier team. So for those that are a little bit new to ISDE, not quite familiar with how it works, um, there's the world trophy team, the junior trophy team, and the women's trophy team. And then there's a bunch of club teams. So um, I haven't found out where to find the the club team results. So we're going to go over the, the world trophy teams um, here in just a minute. But each country sends, for the world trophy team, they send four of their best riders that they choose and only three scores count. So that is the one thing that's a little bit different with the world trophy team versus the junior trophy team and the women's trophy team, the world trophy team. There are four riders, but the three best times of the day count. And then the worst time of those four gets dropped for that day. Now that is going to come up here in just a moment. So keep in mind that this is the only one where there are four people on each team and so one person score each day is thrown out and the top three scores are counted and by scores obviously I mean total cumulative time of that day and of those special tests so there were five special tests today and I saw a picture someone posted a a drone picture of it of the special tests that they're racing in in a field it looked like what hopes and dreams are made of like that looked like what you want to ride a dirt bike. I don't know how it was in person, but the overhead shot of it looked like what hopes and dreams are made of. But leading the way after the first day, it is Team Spain that is holding on to the overall lead. But the important part about this is Josep Garcia won every single test of the day and currently leads the overall by over a minute. So bear in mind, when we go to these other... um, the next couple of teams here that Joseph Garcia is doing a lot of this by himself right now by, by taking a minute off in the first day. But um, yeah, team Spain remains out in front. Their cumulative time for the day with their top three riders is two hours, 14 minutes and 43.88 seconds. So they currently sit number one, but Joseph Garcia is number one overall and uh, obviously a workhorse for that Team Spain team. Joseph Garcia, for for those that remember, he was the one that started the the series with us at the GNCC series and raced some of the other stuff at the beginning of this year uh, before having a little bit of an issue with an injury at Florida and then decided to take the rest of the time off and uh, heal himself and get ready for the rest of his season overseas. Um, But he goes out there and so far has won every single test of this year's ISDE. We saw him on the podium with a second place finish at Florida. So uh, Joseph Garcia is on another level. He's ripping right now. In the number two spot in the World Trophy Team, it is Team Italy with a cumulative time of 2 hours, 15 minutes, and 6 seconds. Um, so that is 22.26 seconds off of the lead that Team Italy currently is. And then it's Team United Kingdom that is in that number three spot with a cumulative time of 2 hours, 15 minutes, and 6.17 seconds. That puts them 22.29 seconds out of the lead. So just three one-hundredths of a second 
separates second and third place between Team Team Italy and Team United Kingdom. And then right after that, in the number four spot is Team United States with a cumulative time of two hours, 15 minutes, and nine seconds. 9.98 seconds, which is 26.1 seconds out of the lead, which is less than four seconds outside of a podium. And as we just mentioned, that's only three hundredths out of second place. So sitting very good on day number one, we're going to see which of these riders can continue to remain consistent as far as Spain and Italy and United Kingdom is concerned, um, and especially with the United States. But we are right there in the hunt. We are right there in the mix. Uh, The number five spot is 59.93 seconds down from the lead, and that is the home team. That's Team France. So United States right there in the mix, less than four seconds between them and second place, and then 26.1 seconds between them and first place. But now keep in mind, as a team – We are 26 seconds behind. That is important because when we go back up to Josep Garcia, who is leading the overall by more than a minute, um, so Josep's total time is 32.50.77, and then the number two spot is 33.14.12. So I guess I'm horrible at math. I think that's only 25 seconds, somewhere around 25 seconds. But... Um, that is over the Italian rider of Verona, Andrea. Um, but if you look at that, our top rider after the first day is Dante Oliveira, who ran a 33 minute and 40 second time on the day. Joseph Garcia, as we mentioned, is at a 32 50. So that puts him 50 seconds ahead of our fastest rider in Dante Oliveira. So if we can start chipping away at that, um, I mean, like I said, we're, we're right there in the mix for this, um, for this junior trophy team. But the way that our junior trophy team riders are sitting right now, Dante Oliveira leads the way for Team USA in the number nine spot overall. Caleb Russell just behind him in that number 10 spot overall. Um, and then coming in after that is Lane Michael, who currently sits in 13th place overall. And then Josh Toth put her in 19th place overall on the day today. So that is the running order for Team America as they continue to climb up these ranks and move up the ranks. Um, I'll definitely want to see or definitely will see these guys getting more comfortable as the week goes on and kind of get settled in. And especially now that we've had a day of racing under our belt, um, I expect those times to keep getting chipped away. But poised in a very good position right here in that number four spot with the amount of time that we have in between. Um, And keep in mind, Caleb Russell running top 10 overall with a completely torn ACL. So we saw the Torres ACL a few weeks ago. Um, went out there, walked all the special tests this week, and now he's out there running 10th place overall. That is going to be something to keep an eye on, whether he gets more confidence in that knee and is able to push more and more and work his way into an overall spot, or if that will start to wear on him as the week goes out. Um, He posted that they put eight hours on their dirt bikes today so there's a lot of riding it's a gruesome week it's a lot of work that goes into it six days of racing with a torn acl so like i said it could go either way we've seen caleb ride the isde injured before we've seen caleb win gncc races injured before we've seen caleb come back from knee and shoulder surgeries way before he should have and win races before so He would not be over there racing if he wasn't fully confident in himself and in his abilities. But all I'm saying is it's something to to keep an eye on. I know when Caleb Russell retired from racing full-time professionally, one of the big things that he still wanted to accomplish in his career um, and and really what what he would think would really complete his career is an ISDE overall. So now he's at the point. He's got three kids. He's been retired for two years now, almost two years. Um, I don't know how many more ISDE he plans on going to, but I'm sure that is, um, playing in his head right now. And, uh, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on, but I mean, Dante Oliveira, we watched him have an amazing ride last year. He picks up right where he left off. Lane Michael has got some more ISDE experience under his belt. Remember he was part of that first winning trophy team. Lane Michael was when Ryan Sipes got injured, Lane Michael stepped in and, and helped them bring home the gold that year. 
since then he's won a sprint enduro championship over here in the u.s um so it's really exciting man toth is um a junior trophy junior world trophy winner in the past before um been on the podium and stuff before so um expect him to get settled in and everything as the the week progresses as well but that is the way that it stands up our junior trophy team is not as exciting of news as we would like as far as team usa is concerned but leading the way in the junior trophy division the junior trophy classification it is team italy that is out front with a total time of 144 45 so an hour 44 minutes and 45 seconds in the number two spot it is team finland that has an hour and 46 and 18 seconds um, combined and then in the third place spot is team uk who currently sits two minutes out of the lead with a total time of an hour 46 minutes and 50 seconds now the reason i say this is not quite the best news for team america it was very unfortunate i believe it was the first test of the day um cody barnes who cody barnes has been lighting the world on fire just wrapped up a pro 2 sprint enduro championship um been running really well been getting podiums left and right battling for wins left and right he was selected for this junior trophy team and unfortunately ended up having a mechanical issue with the motorcycle everything that i've heard says that the stator went out so just a complete freak thing that no one could have expected and obviously when you're out there uh in the middle of nowhere making your way to special tests and racing you don't just happen to have an extra stator on you because it's really not something that, that you would ever think about so um just a a, a very rare mechanical issue which i'm sure cody has to be gutted to be eliminated on the the first day because of that um but as we mentioned before with the world trophy team they have four riders in the top three scores count every other team or every other classification they only have three riders and all three scores count so if you time out for a test you don't make it back in time um then you're timed out for the day and it just gives you an automatic time of three hours for the day Obviously, when you're scoring three hours, there's there's not really much that, that you can do. Um, so that will effectively take Team USA out of the Junior Trophy Team Championship run um, throughout the rest of the race. We currently sit in 16th place out of 16 teams. Um, and like I said, with that three hours, it just adds up. So it looks like Team Sweden lost a rider two today. So might be able to battle and move up a spot. And it looks like Team France did as well. So 14th, 15th, and 16th are all down one rider in that junior trophy team race. Um, but we still got a couple guys out there. We got Mateo Oliveira. He's out there. And then Alston Walton, who had both of those guys had really good rides out at the ISDE last year. Um, right now, Mateo currently sits 32nd place overall. And Alston Walton is just behind in the number 34 spot overall. So... Those guys will still keep racing throughout the week, get lots of helpful experience, useful experience as um, as they are on their way for the rest of the six days. Unfortunately, Cody did time out, so his week is over. And with that third score not being counted or being counted at three hours, it effectively eliminates the, the junior trophy team from title contention in this year's ISDE, which is such a bummer, especially so early on in the race. But... Um, we move down to the women's trophy team where we are dominating. Um, the women, the USA women, are the reigning defending ISDE champions from last year. And speaking of reigning and defending, last year we saw Brandy Richards go over there and win every single test of the week. Completely unprecedented. Um, probably not unprecedented. Uh, someone's probably done it before. But... Very rare, very cool. Brandy Richards won every test of the of the entire week last year. She comes out, picks up right where she left off. She wins every single test of day number one at this year's ISDE. But, oh, hey, who's in the number two spot? America's own Corey Steed. So 
awesome to see these girls absolutely ripping. Brandy Richards is your number one women's rider overall. Corey Steed is your number two women's rider overall. And Rachel Guttish is your number six overall women's rider, which puts Team United States well in the lead after one day of racing with a time of an hour, 54 minutes, and 29 seconds. In the number two spot is Team UK, the United Kingdom. They currently sit with an hour, 58 minutes, and 24 seconds. Three minutes and 55 seconds back is United Kingdom after one day of racing. One day of racing. Each of these riders have 35 to 40 minutes on their machines. In that 35 to 40 minutes, our Team USA women have put almost a four-minute gap on that number two spot. But, as we mentioned, anything can happen. If one rider goes out for any reason, um, whether it's a mechanical, whether it's an injury, anything like that, obviously that's going to end the week as well. But if everyone can keep it rubber side down, on uh, on two wheels, we are sitting in a very good spot. Up three minutes and 55 seconds are the women's trophy team after one day of racing over Team United Kingdom. And in the number three spot for the women's trophy race, it is Team France with a time of two hours and 50 seconds. So that is the way that it shakes out there. Um, but yeah, so... A lot of racing still left to be done. A lot of coverage is still yet to be done. If there's anything specific you want to know about the ISD, um, I invite you to shoot me a message and let me know what you would want to hear. Um, that way I can know what to report to you guys each week. So um, trying to line some stuff up, have a few different guests on throughout this week. I got at least one rider who has competed in several ISDEEs. I added some letters there, it sounded like, but um, has competed in them before, so hopefully we'll have them on, hear what they have to say about the week, and kind of pick their brain about what you what these riders can expect. So I think that'll be pretty cool, and I'm going to try my hardest to get some folks that are over there. So like I said, the, the big problem is service and, and having service while you're out there, but everyone goes back to the hotel, and there should be Wi-Fi there, so maybe we can jump on some, some FaceTimes or something with some people that are over there. Um, I'll reach out to, to Cody Barnes. Um, maybe he can help us out with some reporting throughout the rest of the week. I know Lance with XC Gear is over there as well. I'm sure he could he would come on. So I'm going to try to keep it entertaining this week, get some sights, get some sounds, get some stories of everything that's going on over there, and get some people on. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to claim it. We're doing a show every night this week. So for the next six days, there will be an OTP when you wake up each morning. Um France is six hours ahead, so they usually are finishing up like midday, so lunchtime, East Coast time, um, they should be finishing their days over there, so that'll give us some time to talk to people, get the results, get everything built in, and then uh, bring it to you. So if you don't feel like trying to navigate this website, navigate these results, ah, just turn into OTP each day, and we'll keep you updated on what is going on at this year's international six days enduro we'll run through the top 10 overall riders real quick joseph garcia as we mentioned has won every single test of the weekend so far he currently sits in that number one spot i wish i did some calculations and told you how far back they were but it doesn't so i'm not going to try to do math on the spot but joseph garcia is in that number one spot um italy's andrea verona is in that number two spot um, I don't know what flag this is. It looks like Sweden. Let me check. Sweden. This dude has a 4110. We'll go back. This guy has a 3322. Um, so I still think that looks like the Swedish flag. But anyway, it's Mikhail Pearson person that is in the number three spot over well or overall, and those are your class leaders as well. So, Josep Garcia is in that E2 class, Andrea Verona is in the E1 class, and Mikhail Person is in the E3 class. So, those are your top three riders overall. Each one of them 
currently leading their respective classes. In the number four spot out of Team UK, it is Nathan Watson that's currently holding down fourth place overall. Um, In fifth place overall, another Brit that we all know as familiar, Steve Holcomb. Steve Holcomb on that factory beta machine also came over and raced the first few GNCCs with us this year. He currently sits fifth place overall after one day of racing at this year's ISDE. In the number six spot from Team France, it is Zachary Pichon that's in that number six spot. Um, In the number seven spot from Team Australia, Daniel Milna. Currently holding down that number seven spot. So cool to see Daniel Milner back over there and racing. Um, We've seen him on rails at many of ISDEs before. Um, In that number eight spot, it is Jean Bertreau, I think, is the best that I can get. Um, In that number nine spot. And then, or excuse me, that's number eight. Because in ninth place overall is Team America's. Dante Oliveira, and as we mentioned, rounding out your top 10 overall riders is Caleb Russell, also from Team USA, in that number 10 spot. So, um, Caleb Russell and Dante Oliveira are both in the 33 minute and 40 second mark. Dante is less than one tenth of a second ahead of Caleb Russell, and both of them are less than a minute off of the overall leader of Josep Garcia. So, still right there in striking distance. There's six, excuse me, five days left of racing. So, anything can happen. This thing can end up any different way that you can look at it. Um, Lane Michael, as we mentioned, that number 13 spot. Josh Toth in that number 19 spot. And like I said, these guys are going to get settled in. They're going to go faster and faster. And there's five more days left of racing. So plenty of time to make up. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of it. I hope you guys are looking forward to watching the rest of it and, and hearing about the rest of it as well. But tune in here tomorrow. A um, little bit different of an OTP Tuesday because we're going to be focused on ISDE. And then we will also give you an update every single day this week. So tune in right here to On The Pipe Podcast. Be a friend. Tell a friend if you enjoy these episodes or get something out of it. I encourage you and invite you to let your friends know about OTP so they can tune in and listen as well because we're going to grow this thing. Um, up, to se- up to something season, hit a roadblock. Um, there's a, a big big thing that happened that is a part of up to something season that we are currently working through the kinks on so um don't really want to get in, get into that because it affects multiple other people but we're still working we're still trying to bring that to you um sorry it is this far delayed but we're up to something thank you for tuning in we hope to see you tomorrow right here on on the pipe podcast